Гетап. Гетап. С тебя на эти яйца точка. Вставай. Вставай. Jupiter Ascending was a 2015 200 million dollar sci-fi blockbuster movie featuring massively costly space visuals and some of the hottest most in-demand stars of planet Earth of the time that you probably have no memory of whatsoever. It was written and directed by the Wachowskis who you know as the people behind the Matrix and with this movie they essentially tried to redo what they did with the Matrix by basing Jupiter Ascending entirely on that same style and process of storytelling that worked for them so well before. World building. What I mean by world building essentially is placing your story in our existing world but then expanding and opening that world up to be something much more. In the Matrix, the gist is that the reality we live in is just a simulation. It's not real, so we can bend and defy the rules of it if we just choose to believe. And it worked so well that not only was the movie an incredible thrill ride from beginning to end, but it also ended up becoming a prominent part of our culture and even the way we speak. You see a deja vu, you see something weird. Oh, the simulation is coming apart. Oh, it's a glitch in the Matrix. And with Jupiter Ascending, the filmmakers took the exact same approach, only instead of exposing our reality as a simulation, they set out to expand the scope of what our reality actually means. Here, the gist is that our universe is full of life. There exists other inhabited planets, other more advanced alien races, so we can go and explore all that if we just choose to believe. All in all, from the eye-opening rabbit hole to the chosen one hero that enters it, not only similar, but pretty much the same. Is a computer-generated dream world to keep us under control. Those buildings will be rebuilt by tonight. That's impossible. Take a look. Holy. Human beings are no longer born. We are grown. Once the population exceeds the planet's ability to sustain it, it's considered ripe for harvest. To change, change to find human beings. Approximately a hundred human beings. Into this. The difference is that whereas the world building in the Matrix lifted that movie up to become a fantastic cultural phenomenon that made back seven times its budget, the world building in Jupiter Ascending did it. It mostly resulted in a pretty boring, uninteresting, overpriced, convoluted mess that nobody wanted to see. Which is a bit weird since the filmmakers did the exact same thing as before. So then, what happened? What could have possibly gone wrong? Well, let's try to figure that out. Let's compare Jupiter Ascending to the original Matrix to see why the world building here crumbles down in flames before anything is even fully constructed. Here's how to fail at world building. The first lesson to take from The Matrix is that if you have a new kind of special movie world that you truly think has something of value to give to your audience, then you wanna be quick and effective in actually giving it to them. Here for example, when the movie opens, we're immediately right in it. We have Trinity being confronted by cops, we have Agent showing up for her, we have this 6 minute power pack sequence deliberately designed to sell us on what the world of this film has to offer and why we should take interest. And it works. Oh dude, that's awesome. How's she doing this? Jesus Christ, that's impossible. How this man just jumped this far? No, 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 what are you doing? There's a truck coming. You can't go talk on a phone. We have the name of their next target. The name is Neo. Neo, huh? Sounds important. Who is he? What's he? Then compare this to the opening of Jupiter Ascending. We start off with this backstory voiceover about our hero's parents, which not only has nothing to do with the special world this movie wants to build, but also pretty much serves no necessary purpose in the story at all. Then we meet our hero Jupiter Jones, who is unexcitedly cleaning a toilet. And that's it. That's the full 5 minute intro that takes us to the title card. After that, we do thank god finally begin expanding to that special aspect of this world when we go to this alien planet to meet our bad guys. But even then, the movie doesn't really even try to sell us on the specialty of what it offers or why we should take any interest in it. All this scene is, is these three humanoid aliens standing around in this empty planet, peacefully talking talking to each other. I mean, yes, the scene does establish a couple key bits of information like the notion of harvesting planets for life and the earth being of some importance, but it's not delivered in a very interesting way. I must say, looking a little worse for wear. Could it be success does not agree with you? And you look so well. Could it be that failure agrees with you? You may have inherited mother's head for business, but I inherited her heart. 
Then we cut back to Earth where Jupiter is cleaning more toilets, which again not only has nothing to do with what makes this movie well special, but also is kind of pointless because we've seen this already and now you're just repeating information without actually pushing things forward. After that, at last, this expanded world does try to make an impression. When we have our supporting hero Channing Tatum going to find Jupiter's name in a list and then being ambushed by these intergalactic hunters in a way that can happen only in this world. But then, before we have time to generate any real interest whatsoever, the scene just ends midway through because now we need to go to this alien bad guy again to learn that she wants to go after the Earth as well. I'm not gonna keep going through every scene, but the point I'm getting at is this. Instead of selling us on the awesome specialty of this specific world right away and effectively, the movie cuts that specialty into little pieces and sprinkles them throughout the first act. As an example, if the Matrix did the same thing, it would open like this. First scene, Neo works on his computer. Second scene, Trinity beats up the cops. Third scene, Neo works on his computer some more. Then the agents show up to chase Trinity. Then Neo goes to work. Then Trinity escapes and the agents mention Neo as a person of interest. In other words, what the Matrix achieves successfully in 6 minutes, Jupiter Ascending scrambles to get through in 25 minutes. These scenes highlighting this special expanded world, they're not real intriguing scenes. They're just individual tidbits of necessary information. I believe she named it. Neither Balem nor Titus must suspect my involvement. Miss Dunleavy found, and I want her dead. Imagine if Jupiter Ascending opened like the Matrix. Imagine we open on a planet that's in the midst of being gruesomely harvested by our villains. Imagine that amidst all that chaos, Channing Tatum breaks into some planetary data center where he finds the name and location of Jupiter Jones along with the importance that she and the Earth hold. Imagine we then begin a race for Jupiter and the Earth. That's a single power-packed sequence that immediately hooks us in this world. And while you can argue that that's just repeating the Matrix and that movies can be different, you're right, movies can be different. Some movies open in a very effective way, other movies in a not so very effective way. The second thing The Matrix did very well was showcase the world it's building in such a strong visual manner that not only could we clearly understand it, but also care about it. That famous exposition scene where Morpheus explains The Matrix, he doesn't just explain The Matrix, he shows us The Matrix, he shows us what it's designed to hide, he shows us what we are fighting and why. This is the world as it exists today. In Jupiter Ascending, there is a very similar central horror story born from the existence of this expanded world, the notion of harvesting life. Essentially, the more advanced alien races have figured out how to turn the genetic life force of living beings into an amped up Gatorade bottle that restores the consumer back into their youthful prime. And so obviously, it is now an intergalactic business to grow planets full of life and then just harvest them like fields of crops, which in some sense might be even more disturbing and powerful than the simulation stuff in the Matrix. The only problem is, as you can guess, the movie never properly establishes this. Remember that early scene where the alien and bad guys are peacefully talking in an empty planet that's just been harvested. Well, that's our one and only visual glimpse into the horror of life being harvested. And we don't even see it happen. And so when soon after all the stakes of this movie come from the bad guy wanting to harvest the earth unless we stop him, we have zero visual foundation for what that even means and we genuinely don't care. How does harvesting work? Is it painful? Does it happen immediately or is it a slow process? Could humans fight back? Could Tom Cruise potentially out run it. We just don't know and we just don't care. It's difficult to take this villain's threat seriously when we've never seen him do anything to back up the threats he's making. Like we're supposed to fear for the survival of the whole of planet Earth based solely on his word. The only thing the movie does show us is a quick glimpse of a couple people being turned into Gatorade under the bad guy's floor, which hardly achieves the same effect as us actually seeing and experiencing the sheer chaos and terror of a planet being harvested. And so already, the core central stakes of your movie that this expanded world is trying to build up just fall flat. How long can they harvest the earth? If we harvest later this century? Consider it right for harvest. I will harvest the planet tomorrow. 
Have you ever seen a harvest? Oh no. Never. But in addition to us not caring about this world, the other problem that comes from not establishing it visually is that everything in it very easily becomes just a confusing convoluted mess. Our bad guy is obsessed with harvesting the earth because apparently he has some competition beating him at the life force marketplace. But we never see that competition or even the whole marketplace, so we genuinely have no understanding of his motivations or why this one tiny planet is so important to him. <laughs> Jupiter herself has absolutely no visually established part in anything that happens in the first half of the movie, which makes it very confusing in terms of what the hell is happening or what people are doing or why. Until it then ultimately turns out that she is the reincarnation of the bad guys' queen mother and therefore owns the earth. Okay, but then what is the way this is proven? Well, people say she looks like the mother and then there's also this one statue that kinda resembles her. And that's it. That's the smoking gun proof. In a world where incredibly detailed high-tech 3D recordings exist, your strongest visual evidence is this. Alright. No bees are genetically designed to recognize royalty. Royalty? And funny enough, if you had opened the movie with that bigger showcasing sequence that fixes the first issue, you would have fixed this one as well. You could have shown an opening where the villain's competitor is harvesting an alien planet to become the biggest industry supplier. Establish the harvesting, establish the villain's motivations, establish Jupiter's importance, and so on so on. You could have made us care, you could have made us understand. Could have helped. Finally, even if all other world building stuff fails, there does still exist one very powerful saving grace that can salvage a movie like this from total annihilation. A likable hero that maneuvers through the obstacles of the world with clear goal-oriented intention. Let's say that the Matrix failed in the same ways Jupiter Ascending did. Let's say it didn't introduce its world quickly or effectively. Let's say that world never made any sense or posed any importance. Odds are you could still enjoy or at least stand it. The action is pretty cool, the effects are pretty cool, there is good stuff in here. So as long as the audience knows that okay, this dude Neo has to learn kung fu and go beat this bad guy in a suit, they can follow the movie well enough to at the very least get through to the end without falling asleep. But in the case of Jupiter Ascending, even this goes horribly wrong. Because our main hero, Jupiter Jones, she's a picture-perfect representation of the absolute worst that a movie hero can aspire to be. First of all, Jupiter is the most boring hero you can find, because she has no goals or intentions, she doesn't do anything. You know how Neo chooses to follow the rabbit into the rabbit hole? Well, Jupiter just gets swallowed up by that hole and spat out at the ending credits. The reason she becomes involved in the plot in the first place is because aliens show up to probe her. Then she's taken by Channing Tatum to see Sean Bean and the bees to find out that she's a queen. Then she's taken by the intergalactic hunters to see the bad guy's sister to find out that she's their mother. Then she gets betrayed by Sean Bean and taken to the bad guy's brother to be successfully proposed to by him even though she's his mother. Then she's taken back to earth by Channing Tatum. Twice more actually. I swear to god the only motivated action Jupiter makes in this two hour movie is at the 90 minute mark when she chooses to go face the bad guy to save her family. Or, you know, chooses to let the bad guys take her. All in all, she's not a character as much as she's a bag of valuables for other characters to carry around. Are you taking me to him now? Where am I? Just get me out of here. Where am I? That I can file a tax grievance against you unless you take me directly where I want to go. This is Gleekly on the approach. We have an escort. And speaking of being saved, you know how Neo maneuvers through the obstacles of his world and overcomes challenges in an interesting hero way? Well, that's not Jupiter. She doesn't maneuver through or overcome anything. She gets in trouble and then someone else shows up to rescue her. Honestly, she's less of a hero and more of a fairy tale damsel in distress with her own spin off movie. Yeah. <laughs> 
And to top it all off, Jupiter is also extremely unlikable. You know how Neo was specifically told that he's not the one, and yet he still pushed forward because he's not defined by what he is or isn't, but by what he does? Well, just imagine that, but the opposite. You are in for a surprise when you find out what I do for a living. No, it's not what you do, it's what you are. What? Bro, I'm out, man. The reason Jupiter doesn't have to achieve or even do anything in this movie is because every person she meets will gladly do all that stuff for her because she's a queen. May I please fight for you with my life? May I please give you your vast inheritance? May I please go to the space immigration offices for you? Everything is handled for her. And why is that? Why is she a queen everyone loves and wants to simp for? What has she done to earn all this? Well, she was born. A queen just is what she is. As in, Jupiter is the most extreme example of those movie heroes who get handed everything and more simply because of who they are. And that's not relatable, that's not likable, that's just really annoying. Most people don't just get handed things for no reason. Most people don't want to support someone who just gets handed things for no reason. I mean, why does she get to be the queen of the universe when I have to sit here all day editing these goddamn internet videos just so I don't get sent to the Krakosian Gulag for missing rent? That's not fair. It's not fair. I hate you Jupiter Jones. I hate you Jupiter Sending. I don't want to ever see you ever again.